What's up guys, Tyler from DualCustomMage.com here. Um, this week we got another exhibition style match and I'm piloting Archangel Avison, which is actually a red-white commander and this is like a draw-go control version and I know that sounds extremely weird in red-white but it's built to abuse some cards that are really good but don't see enough play. It's kind of hard to fit them in other, other decks like Balance and Teferi's Protection and kind of weird combos like that. Rarer Monsters from the Discord channel named it Scorched Earth Angel, which I thought was brilliant because it plays a ton of uh, Armageddon and, and Wrath of God type effects too. And my opponent is running the Gitrog Monster, a, a tier one black green kind of control slash combo deck and just plays all just all good, good cards, really solid, um, grinding out value, uh, kind, of, kind of going off at this commander. Let's get to it. Okay, I am on the play, and my opening hand looks pretty awesome. I have uh, all my colors of mana, and I have Orm's Chant plus Enlightened Tutor, which is um, great because I can grab uh, the main combo with uh, Orm's Chant, which is Isochron Scepter. So I play uh, just a Plains, he plays a uh, Forest, and then at the end of his turn I Enlighten Tutor for said Isochron Scepter. Um, if you're not familiar with this combo, uh, the Isochron Scepter lets you imprint an instant with CMC 2 or less on it. The Orim's Chant uh, qualifies for that. Uh, it, it says that they cannot cast spells, and if you pay the kicker cost, creatures can't attack this turn. So as long as you can keep activating the Scepter over and over on their upkeep, they are locked into only playing instant speed spells for the rest of the game. So that's my plan here. Um, on his third turn, I cast the Ice Crown Scepter, and then I have to pay an extra mana for the kicker, but whatever. If it means he can't play spells for the rest of the game, no big deal. So my goal is just to keep doing this over and over again, just land any threat, this Corp Firewalker will do fine. Um, once I get enough mana, besides the three, um, that I have to sink into the scepter, then I'll be uh, totally fine. He sees that he's not going to be able to get out of that, so he uh, scoops it up. So pretty pretty uh, one-sided game one there. Uh, in game two, my opening hand is awful. I have no real lands that can produce mana, so I have to mulligan. Um, this hand is fine. I got uh, two mana rocks plus Armageddon, which is a nice um, thing to have together. Um, and then I see Council's Judgment, which is a good card that I want in this matchup, so I scry to the top. He goes turn one, uh, Dryad Arbor off of Green Sun Zenith, and then he gets to go turn two, Lotus Cobra, and a land, um, but he doesn't have a follow-up play to that, luckily. I uh, transmute the uh, Ash Barons and then play Marble Diamond on my turn. This is, I have a lot of two mana, uh, mana rocks in this deck, because I have cards like Armageddon and um, Wrath of God that I want to get into play ASAP. Um, on his turn, he plays Gitrog, and then uh, has another land drop, which lets him play Sakura Tribe Elder, attacks me. Um, so I'm way behind at this point, but luckily I can play Mindstone and Council's Judgment. Um, this card is fantastic, kind of an auto-include in any white deck. Um, so he, uh, I choose Gitrog, and uh, I think he's unclear how that spell works on X-Mage, and he actually accidentally loses his own Sakura Tribe Elder, but he still has way more than mana than he needs to uh, recast the Gitrog monster on his next turn and plays a Temple of the False God. Uh, I say go with the intention of flashing in Ar Archangel Avacyn. Um And then <laughs> on his next turn, he starts to really go off with Gitrog, Lotus Cobra, a Tireless Tracker, playing multiple lands, getting those two landfall triggers, he gets a clue and a, a mana every time a land comes into play. Um, and then he draws a card every time a land is sacrificed. Um, so he has four or five clues this turn. Uh, he attacks with the Lotus Cobra and the Gitrog. So I flash in the Ar my uh, commander, Archangel Avacyn, and just block the Lotus Cobra since I can uh, kill that thing. And I'll just take a little bit extra damage. And his post combat, he goes Crop Rotation, um, which is a really powerful card in, in the Gitrog deck. And Sacks a land to get uh, Dakmore Salvage, which is a really good combo piece as well um, with Gitrog Monster. So on my turn, I attack him for four and then say go. 
and here goes murderous cut um, on my on his upkeep against my uh, commander. So I'm thinking about this Teferi's protection here in response. Um, but first I decided to sack the Mind Stone in case I draw something uh, maybe more relevant. I draw Settle the Wreckage, which is close to being really relevant, but I end up playing Teferi's Protection because I only have three extra mana at that point. And this means that I stay alive because I would have been dead. His creatures are so huge that I would have died. Uh, on his turn, not surprisingly, he keeps playing lands, sacking clues, and then he plays uh, Garuk, untaps some more lands, and sack some more clues just drawing a ton of cards he's drawn i don't know four times as many cards than me at this point so on my turn my goal my plan is to cast the settle of the wreckage and then uh wipe the wipe the board with armageddon but he goes uh duress and so and rather than showing him settle the wreckage because i don't really want to reveal that card i just uh concede because he would have taken settle the wreckage i'm sure and then i would have lost all right game three I see a pretty good hand here. Once again, Mana Rock plus Armageddon that hopefully I can cast this time. And I also have Mana Tithe for some early interaction. Uh, so I play a play and say go. He has once again has a Green Sun Zenith on turn one, but I figure I might as well Mana Tithe that to slow him down. And I'm going to tap out next turn anyway for the Fire Diamond. So uh, here, here we go again. Uh, another one of these two mana rocks. And man, I love the art on, the, on these cards. These old cards are so good. Don't make it like that anymore, folks. All right, on my turn, I, I rip a Isochron Scepter, which I decide to run out there with uh, Path to Exile as the imprinted card. Um, but unfortunately, he goes Abrupt Decay on my Scepter. But at least the Abrupt Decay doesn't hit the Fire Diamond, which would have been pretty bad for me. Um, on his turn, he just sacks a Panorama. I don't draw land, but then he goes uh, Titania, Protector of Argoth, which is comparable in power to get rug some would say even more powerful um and then he has terramorphic expanse already used so he can uh get a five five elemental right away uh, on my turn I, I have to keep in mind this tectonic edge because i'm actually debating after the sunset pyramid i play whether to draw and hope to hit a land where i can flame slash titania but i decide to not do that because i don't want to risk my land being um tech edge tech edged D -d -d -d. Uh, on his turn, he plays Gitrog, tax me for five. I, I draw a land, but I decide I'm just going to play uh, Day of Judgment and, and say go, because I want to save this land till after Armageddon. Uh, I, he goes Scourge Familiar on his turn. I'm really lucky here that he doesn't play Gitrog again, because uh, I can actually take a few hits from this Scourge Familiar. And with Armageddon uh, that I've cast, he, he doesn't draw a crap ton of cards, which he would have done with Gitrog Monster. So um, I'm feeling pretty good now. I have uh, two two rocks. I just uh, draw the and, and play the Cold Steel Heart here, naming uh, white. So I have you know three mana sources to his zero. I take a few hits off this Scourge Familiar, but now I can uh, freely oust the uh, the Scourge Familiar, which is really good right now because it's one denying him a chance to draw land two turns from now. <clears throat> I kind of wanted to save this oust until uh, after I Armageddon for that reason. Um, he finally gets a land, but can't do anything. And I draw Crucible of Worlds, which is an amazing draw post-Armageddon. Um, I have three lands in my graveyard. Um, and I'm going to try to go for the Inspiring Vantage first so it doesn't come into play tapped. Um, there's that sweet art masterpiece, Crucible of Worlds. So I get the, the Crucible in play, plus Inspiring Vantage. I say go at the end of his turn. Uh, he has nothing to do, so I just draw a card off Sunset Pyramid once again. Uh, and then he, I say draw go. At the end of his turn, I play my Archangel Avison. Untap, looking really good. Draw a Dictate of Heliod, which is kind of nice, I guess. Um, so I try to flash that in before damage, but he has a Murderous Cut to take out my Archangel Abyssin. So that's that. Uh, he draws another mana source, Cavern of Souls naming Frog. Uh, turn, I, at the end of his turn, I draw another card. I get a gamble, but my, my goal here is to just try to stick my commander until uh, he runs out of removal. He's starting to get some more mana sources here, but um, I'm still winning the attrition war by far. 
So once again, I flash in Archangel Addison. And then on my upkeep, this time I scry with Sunset Pyramid. I see a Greater Gargadon and I decide to keep that on top because that allows me to gamble for balance, which is an awesome combo with the Greater Gargadon. Um, I suspend the Gargadon, float three white mana, and then start to sack all my lands. Um, and then cast the balance. So now he has to sacrifice, and you can see this Gargadon here enables me to do that. I can sack an artifact creature or land during the time counter. But now he has to sack all his lands, discard two cards, and I keep everything with a Crucible of Worlds. So um, pretty, pretty good for me. And he, 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 he scoops after that uh, nonsense. So there you go, guys. This match showcased some of the broken and nonsense things you can do with both of these decks. Um, I was really excited to show you this Scorched Earth Angel build that I came up with. As always, let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you liked the video, I would be thrilled if you could subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.